In this lecture, we will explore how to combine capacitors when these capacitors are placed parallel to one another in our electric circuit. Now to see this, let's look at the following two electric circuits. In electric circuit number one, we begin with two capacitors, C1 and C2. And these capacitors are placed parallel or across one another in our electric circuit. Now notice that we don't have a battery in our electric circuit number one, and that means we don't have have an electric potential difference and if we don't have an electric potential difference or a voltage that means electrons won't be moving in our electric circuit and so we won't see an accumulation of charge of, across our two capacitors so charge on C1 and charge on C2 will be zero now let's explore what happens in electric circuit number two when we incorporate a 12 volt <coughs> battery into our electric circuit. Now when we incorporate this battery, what happens is that now we have an electric potential difference. And so electrons will tend to move from a higher electric potential to a lower electric potential. So electrons will move from our anode to our cathode. So, as electrons begin moving from our anode, they travel along this circuit, and when they get to this intersection, or node B, they will split up. In other words, our electrons, our flow of electrons, will split into two, in the same way that the flow of water in a pipe will split when it comes to intersection in that pipe. But notice the following. Charge is conserved according to Kirchhoff's first rule. So the electrons or the uh, flow of electrons that goes into our node B equals the flow that goes up plus the flow that goes down. So some electrons go up and some electrons go down. None of those electrons are destroyed or lost. There is a conservation of charge. The amount of charge that goes up and the amount of charge that goes down depends on the amount of capacitance in each capacitor C1 and C2. So, now these electrons will stop at these plates, right? At this plate and at this plate. And our charge will accumulate on both of these plates. And this charge accumulation will cause our electrons on these two plates to be pushed away. And these electrons will then move along these two paths they will combine at node A and they will move to our cathode in our battery. Now let's try to find a single capacitor that has a capacitance equal to these two capacitors. In other words, we want to replace these two parallel capacitors with a single capacitor that has an equivalent amount of capacitance. And this will allow us to find the amount of charge that flows through our circuit. So let's begin with the following uh, fact. So we just said that charge is conserved. The amount of charge flowing into node B is equal to the charge that goes up plus the charge that goes down. So let's say Q1 is the charge that goes up and Q2 is the charge that goes down into capacitor C2. So we can express that using an equation. <coughs> Remember that Q equals CV. In other words, the charge on our capacitor is equal to the capacitance of that capacitor multiplied by the voltage of that capacitor. So Q total, Q going into our node B, is equal to the charge going up plus the charge going down. Now notice the following fact. What is the voltage across this capacitor compared to the voltage on this capacitor? Well, let's look at distance A to distance B. And let's remember that voltage is given by taking the electric field and multiplying by distance. Now, in this, in this capacitor, in this section, we have a constant electric field. And that means the electric field across this guy and the electric field across this guy is exactly the same. And also notice that the distance from A to B is exactly the same. And likewise, distance between these two capacitors is assumed to be the same. That means that our voltage across these two capacitors is exactly the same. 
So voltage across C1 and voltage across C2 are one and the same. They're equivalent. So how do you find the actual amount of voltage? Well, it turns out that the amount of voltage is simply equal to the voltage of the battery. So the voltage across this guy is 12 volts and the voltage across this guy is 12 volts as well. So voltage of this guy is equal to voltage across A and B. So V equals VAB. So let's go back to this part. Now let's use our equation Q equals CV and replace our Q total, our Q1 and Q2. So what I'm trying to do here once again is the following. I'm trying to find a capacitor that can be that can replace our two capacitors. So this is what I'm trying to find and I'm trying to find this guy using these two guys. Okay, so I begin with this formula and now I replace every single guy with C times V. So once again, the voltage across C1 and C2 is, is exactly the same. So Q1 is equal to C1 times V plus C2 plus V. So voltage is the same for both cases and that means the voltage of my new capacitor that will replace these two guys will also be V. So the only difference in my new capacitor will be its capacitance. Its capacitance will change but its voltage will stay the same. So I get C total, the capacitance of my new capacitor multiplied by voltage equals C1V plus C2V. And now notice that I have a common term in each of these terms. And that means I can take out the V. And so I get voltage multiplied by C total equals C1 plus C2. So once again, I see the following thing. In order to replace our two parallel plate capacitors with a single capacitor, we must make sure that the capacitance on that single capacitor is equal to C equals C1 plus C2. In other words, the capacitance of my new capacitor that will replace these two capacitors will have a capacitance of C1 plus C2. So I simply add up our two capacitance. And for example, if capacitance 1, if C1 has a capacitance of 5 and C2 has a capacitance of 10, that means if I am to replace these two guys with a new capacitor, I have to have a capacitance of 15. So I rewrite this electric circuit in the following way. My battery will stay the same, 12 volts. And now I replace these two guys with a single capacitor that has C total of 15. Now the voltage on this guy will remain the same. It's still V. The only thing that will change is the capacitance as well as my Q total. Now my Q total is bigger than the C1, than the electric charge on C1 and the electric charge on C2. And it's bigger by the following amount. You simply take the two uh, charges on both of these C1s, you add them up and you get the charge on this capacitor. Now, why is this useful? Why is it useful to convert this circuit into this circuit, where this circuit had two capacitors, C1 and C2, and this has one capacitor, that is a combination of these two capacitors? Well, this is useful because now, knowing my voltage and knowing my capacitance, I can find the charge that flows in our electric circuit because I have two knowns and one unknown. But in this case, I had three unknowns and only two equations. And therefore, there is no way I could find my charge, amount of charge that flows in this circuit. In other words, if I know my C1 and I know my C2, what I don't know are Q1, Q2, and I also don't know my volt... <coughs> my voltages. 